Hi everybody. Selogeny time. Hello. Here we have cousin It keeping us company if he's not in the way. He can stay if he's not in the way. But we're dealing with some Selogenies today. So yes, I have two pots here and only one orchid. The other one being in bloom, I am going to risk repotting her with the spikes on the go and see if the blooms or anything drops or dries off. And you will see why I'm doing that this time of year, despite everything that's happening with that orchid, but she's coming out last. So that's her pot. And uh, this one, my Pandorata, look at this. He's grown a beard. He looks a little bit like, to me, like one of the ZZ Top guys now. Look at this. Huh? He wants to show his beard today. Okay, as long as you're not in the way. Seriously? Mm. So my Pandorata, amazing. Bloomed earlier this year, not for very long. But what I saw, yes, very big orchid and mine is not even the size of its potential. But she has earned her keep. If I can get a spike like that every year, then definitely, definitely a keeper. Not so much for her fragrance, but on the other hand, when you've got blooms like that, the pollinators will either come on their own or maybe with the fragrance she has, don't bother. Maybe she's one of those self-pollinating types because her fragrance is not really as pleasant as her blooms are to look at. Okay, so while I was yapping away, um, <clears throat> thank you so much for being here. I have to get better at this. Sometimes I've got such a train of thought, I just don't, I just start yapping. So forgive me. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Meanwhile, <laughs> in the pot that the Pandorata is going to go, I've put three microfibers. Normally I do loops. But seeing as this pot is so big, I need the wicking to go up as high as possible. So that's what I'm going to do because my Pandorata is quite thirsty. And now I am uh, third week of August, third week of August. So we're at the brink. Why am I doing this now? Because can I have my label, please? Thank you. Well, a label grabbing root. What's not to like? Because uh, she's growing roots. Right there on her new bulb. And you see how crutched it is against the pot? Yeah. Take her out and give her a new, bigger pot to grow up against. I do like the 90 degree angle it provided though. But uh, yeah, no. No, no, no. Let's get her out. Let's have a look-see and see if we can't accommodate her better. First of all, let me put some Lekka into the big pot. Let's get ready with everything in case there is a problem and then transition super easy from one pot to the next. So let me just fill this up with Lekka. For now, that's what I'm, how I'm going to leave it. And every time I filled up, I kept pulling the strand up and over so that as I fill around, the strands will eventually be wedged in between the lecker, high enough for the wicking to be allowed. That looks like a good length. We are ready. Let's have a look. Oh, you're right. Ooh, okay. Yeah. They say inorganic media is the cleanest, but that doesn't mean there's no nasties coming as well. Try squeezing a pot full of roots. What a wonderful problem to have. <laughs> I'm glad we got the pot ready. One day, I'm just going to think 
that don't even think of the title of the video until you've done the job. Normally I've got a title in my head, I'm all ready to go. And this one was gonna be quick repot of two Sologenies. <clears throat> yes. Quick nada. I do not want to compromise my pot, I really don't. So I'll just keep on squeezing and pushing without breaking anything, hopefully. As I have new roots, I'm okay if some roots break. I just don't want to break my pot. I just broke my pot. <clears throat> Annoying. Yeah, she's rock solid in here. I don't know if I'm going to have to bring the clippers out and dig her out of this or what. Incredible. Someone's going to give. She can't stay in here. The pot is going to give. That's a shame. Oh well. <laughs> there we go. Ah, so the pot had to give. What a pity. Right. All right, she's eaten. He's eating the microfiber. <laughs> but what a beautiful root system, hey? Isn't that gorgeous? What a beautiful root system. Can't complain, huh? She's eating the microfiber. So I guess that's gonna stay in there. <laughs> ah! Oh, this gives me so much joy. So much joy, what do you think? And there's more to come. Excellent. Let's not mess around. Let's get her into the new bigger pot. And see how long she will last in there. Okay. Up and over. <laughs> Seriously, I'm loving this. Oh, I'm loving this. Now don't you decide to grow something out the other direction, I'm telling you. You'll see with my Sologily Lime Bay why I'm doing what I'm doing now. All that's left is just to fill up around the edges. Beautiful. What do you say, cousin it, huh? That's a serious root system. And I can tell you, cousin it is just laughing away there because he's like, you ain't seen mine yet. And he's absolutely right. My Maxillaria variabilis, AKA cousin it, lives in an orchid top pot and he's eaten it as well. <laughs> Him and his beard. His maiden hair fern there. They've eaten the orchid top pot. It's absolutely incredible. I have ambitions to divide him and pass him and share him. I just don't know how. It would break my heart. I wouldn't know where to start. There would be a lot of loss and breakage. So, oh, but I'm on a tangent. This is not about you, cousin it, and you do this a lot. Stop. All right, but this, is Sologeny Pandorata repot. Unfortunately, I lost a pot, but these white ones, these inner masks are easier to come by than the outer masks. So I'm pretty confident. I mean, famous last words, I know. Seems like Murphy's Law kicks in. When I'm confident about something, it proves me wrong. So I hope I didn't jinx myself there. Okay, 
quick pause. I'm gonna get Lime Bay out and we'll see what she has to offer. Isn't this beautiful? And I have two of those, but one is so long it's hanging over the side there. So I'm going to be very careful and afterwards I'll show her. But isn't it wonderful to have a problem like your orchid is eating your microfiber? <laughs> now I, I came prepared, halfway prepared. This time I'm going to get, I wasn't going to get take any microfiber for this new pot because I was expecting to pull out the microfiber out of this one and reuse it. Based on my past experience with the Pandurata and it eating its microfiber, I'm like, okay, just in case, I'm ready. <laughs> so, now why am I gonna interfere with this orchid? Well, it's not high noon just yet but close and there is curiosity. I am so curious to see the spikes, how they will react with me interfering now with her root system. Call me crazy. I've been waiting for years to get a double spike on a cellogeny. Now I have one and because they're sequential bloomers, they could now be blooming together for a long time. There's the other one. This one has been in bloom since November 2019 and that down there is the 12th bloom and the 13th bud coming. And my sp second spike only just recently opened its first bloom and now th that this is the second bloom. So why am I doing this now? Well, look what's going on. Back in the day, when I got her, I potted her up with the biggest bulb facing forwards, as you do with the direction of growth, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is what she's done. This was her bulb, my first bulb that she grew while she was with me uh, in the wrong direction. And this is then the second one, which has the spike on it. And now she's going, she's clearly going in the wrong direction for my pot. Not according to her, but for my pot. So yes, it's time to intervene. And my curiosity is such that I want to know if I can hold on to the spikes despite getting her out and moving her onto a bigger pot because it's gonna have to happen anyway. So I'm gonna try and uh, do the best I can without completely ruining my current beautiful spikes. And then if I can avoid ruining the spikes, oh, this one's easier. Then I can at least observe if she's going to be okay, just growing on as if nothing has happened, but she is not in there as tight as Pandorata was. Okay. Just checking bloom location. Okay, we have a half and half. That microfiber can stay in there. Unless, is it easy? Oh well, she's dropping much easier the Lekka balls. This is not as tight a fit as the Pandorata. Hmm. How far do I intervene? Always bearing in mind, I don't want to lose the spikes. Just taking off the back rhizome. I had to bury them back in the day a bit. They're not rotten. 
and there's nothing wrong in there either. So cinnamon. There are very good roots in here. Let me just get the cinnamon on first and then I'll show you. just going to flush the roots off with her old water because I put cinnamon on the roots. Not good. So there we go. That is her root system. I'm very cautious about the bloom in the back there. It's not as established as the Pandorata, but it's not bad either. What is this? Okay, that's from four. It's it's firm. I'm just going to leave it like that, and into the pot she goes. No support required anymore. Microfiber, yes, and only one. <laughs> Seeing as she's eaten her other one, now she already has two, so <laughs> that's plenty. Sorry about the background noise. No loop either this time because she has eaten her other microfiber. There's plenty of wicking going to happen there now. So this time I've just have the microfiber flat on the bottom of the pot. Her other microfiber in her system <laughs> will do the rest. And uh, my intention was to pot her into the back. So I'm going to loosen up a bit more of the leka so that I can actually position her how she should have initially been. Well, she was, and then she decided to grow elsewhere. So it's going to be like that. A bit more. Now that we're at it, we can do it a bit more. There we go. And I'm going to use fresh lecker because this other lecker is compromised with a lot of moss. So I'm just going to use fresh lecker. I'm always washing my hands in between with a bleach because I'm touching her and I don't want that to transmit into my fresh sterilized lecker. All right. Go. And that would be Sologeny Lime Bay potted up with two full spikes on the go. And now for we watch and wait and see how she reacts to this. And here they are, a little bit cleaned up. How do you film this? <laughs> I love it. What a problem to have. How do I film this? How do I photograph this? How do I make it look presentable? Oh, well. So Lime Bay is going back into my dining area. So I'm not changing her ambience, her environment. I want to have a proper, proper reading of how she will react, whether she noticed that her feet got tickled. And if not, then we know as well. But back into the dining room where she lives, my Pandorata will, well, beast mode, I would say, with that root system. She's going back into my blooming alley where she's got plenty of light but is in shade. I don't want to expose her to the sun. Last year I had her living on the back shelf there, and that was before we enclosed the window for Siliano's jungle gym. Clearly I'm not going to do that now again but she got a lot, a lot more light. So maybe that is why she bloomed. But then I also did this. So I'd like to try and avoid that and see if she will bloom for me next year if I just bring her in to a little bit more of a shaded location. That is the plan anyway. So yes, Sologenes done. Thank you so very, very much for joining me. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions? Any suggestions? 
let me know. I hope you all have a wonderful day and please stay safe. Take care. Bye.